Hey guys, and welcome to the second video in my NumPy uh, array tutorial. So in today's video, I'm going to be going all uh, over all of the different ways that you can create an array. Uh, and this is just going to be without using like text files and IO and stuff. I'm going to do that in a future video. This is just going to be ways that you can do this with straight uh, code. So nothing like reading in or reading out, but I will be doing that in future videos. So let's go ahead and get started. So NumPy has a lot of different ways, or NumPy, sorry, that you can uh, actually create arrays, and it's really useful, and it makes it a lot faster than doing like embedded for loops with regular lists in Python. So the first way is we have this thing called uh, np.zeros, and what we can do here is this is just going to create us a list, or sorry, an array with the given shape. So in this case, two, three, so two rows, three columns of all zeros. So if I run this and I pr print X to the screen, you can see that we've gotten all zeros here and the default data type for this is a float. Now if I wanted to change this so that it's not a float and it actually is an int, I believe I can do something like D type equals int. And then if I click uh, press X here, print this to the screen, you can see that we get integers instead of floats. So D type equals int. you can change that to float, you can change that to string, uh, however you like there to get that. So the next one, uh, it's going to go with this. It's a very similar is np.ones. Same thing. We give it a shape. Let's just give it like four or five for an example here. Click that X. And you can see again, we get a array filled with ones of the given shape four or five. Now we can also give a shape uh, that's multiple dimensions like four or five, three, print that to the screen. And you can see we get a much longer array, uh, but just showing you that you can go ahead and do that. The next method we're going to use here is actually really useful and it's numpy.arrange and I believe it's actually a range not like as in two separate words so I'll print it out here uh, or type it so we get a range like this and the way that this works is just like the typical range function it's best shown with an example so I'll do that right now but it works in the same way as the standard Python range function. So you see if I print this, I get X, then down here we get array and we get uh, going up to 10, but not including 10, starting at zero, um, an array containing those numbers, which again is really useful. Now what we can do here is we can treat this like a typical range. So I do something like five, 10, and we print this out. So the screen there, you can see we start at five and go to 10, but do not include 10. So it's the same format as a typical range function, start, stop, end, or start, stop, step, sorry. So if I go, for example, let's do one, two, 11, step by two. And then if I print this to the screen, you can see we get one, three, five, seven, nine, like that. So that's really useful. Uh, and we can also do it with decimals as well. So let's, I'm just gonna bring an example I have on another thing here, just to save a bit of typing. So we get mp.range, two, three, go up by 0 0.1 print this, then you can see that we get starting at two and then up to 2.9. Okay, the next one is similar, um, but this one is going to do a bit of math for you, which actually saves us some time. So this one is called lin space. So I'm just going to say x equals np dot lin space. And in here, we're going to type two values, what we want to start at, what we want to stop at, and then um, what to go up by, I believe, something like that. So let, let's just give an example here because I think I actually butchered that description and six. Okay, so let's just print this to the screen to see exactly what it says. Okay, so what we do here is we say we want to start at 1.0, we want to go to 4.0, and we want to have, sorry, six different values in our array. So what this does is it saves us from doing a bit of math and it's going to uh, find out what we need to go up by to get six different values um, ranging from one to four. So you can see we have one, 1 1.6, 2.2, 2.8, uh, so on, and we get six values and they automatically increment uh, properly, so evenly, so that we can get the value. I hope that makes sense. Uh, it's not super complicated. Okay, the next one is similar to the ones and zeros that we had, but this one's gonna just be a constant and allow us to type in whatever value we want, which is really useful as well. So we'll say x equals np.full, so instead of zeros and ones, we're doing full. Same thing, we're going to give a shape. So in this case, I'm going to give two, two. And then the value that we type in here is going to be what's filled for the entire array. Say x equals mp.full, shape two, two with eights. And then if I show you, we get constants. So eights um, in here like so. 
Okay, the next one, and this is going to be for some of you guys that know a little bit about linear algebra. If you don't, don't worry about it, um, <laughs> because you might be kind of confused on what this is. But I am just going to show you. So this is going to give us an identity matrix of shape, um, whatever we give it. So identity matrix have the same rows and columns. So we just give it one argument, which is going to be rows or columns, whatever. So in this case, I'm going to do five. And if I print this, so X, you can see we get uh, an identity matrix. So with our leading ones in the corresponding columns, and this can be useful for doing some calculations. And you can give it obviously whatever uh, parameter you want to give it, right? So five, six, two, so on. Okay, this ne next one, and actually the last one I'm going to show in this video, I know this was kind of short, is going to be creating a random array. So I don't know why you would really want to do this. But if for some reason you do, you can type np.random.random given a shape, let's just do like four or five. And if you print that, you will get a bunch of random values that are of type float. Now I just want to test this out and see if it actually works with integers. I haven't done this before. So let's hopefully it doesn't crash. I uh, unexpected argument. So we can't act. Oh, uh, D type is an unexpected argument. Yeah, so we can't actually end up giving it um, what do you call it integers like that I believe if we wanted to just convert these into integers we just multiply every element in the array by uh, like 100 110 something like that um, to give us an integer anyways that's been it for this video if you guys enjoyed please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next videos where I'm gonna go through stuff like math that we can do um, matrix multiplication we can do a bunch of cool stuff with num numpy this is just the beginning so make sure you watch the rest of them when they come out later